Good afternoon, everyone. We'll be with you shortly. We're just waiting for a few more participants to arrive. We will be with you shortly. We're just waiting for a few more participants to arrive. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another uh, episode of Tea at Three on Wednesdays. Very excited this week. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is river cruise, but we're going to uh, first do a few housekeeping items. Uh, these sessions will be recorded. Uh, so uh, if you weren't able to attend this afternoon, or if you know other people that would enjoy this, uh, you will be sent the recording. You can uh, catch the recordings anytime on our website. Uh, they will be attached to the uh, touring programs, or you can look at the, uh, the list above and see uh, actual webinars, and, and they're all recorded and stored there for future use. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please type your questions into the question and answer box, and we will uh, address any uh, questions at the end of the recording. So as I said, uh, this afternoon, we're going to talk about uh, river cruising uh, with AMA Waterways, our great partner. Uh, we've uh, worked with them for a number of years now, and my great friend, uh, Sandra Gardner, uh, normally we get together and do this together. We go out for a, either a nice lunch or an early dinner uh, if we're doing it in the evenings. And uh, Sandra is a Director of National Accounts for Canada, but located right here in Halifax. And so in honor of us normally being together, I brought a little uh, bubbly this afternoon, Sandra, so I'll start with a sip of that. <laughs> you always need a little bubbly when you're on a river cruise. But uh, next year in uh, 2022, I am proud to say I'm hosting three different river cruises. Uh, and the history of that is normally I host a couple trips each year and our 2020 uh, cruise moved to 2021 and our 21 cruise moved to 22 and we already had chosen our 22 cruise. So we have three uh, cruises with uh, all guaranteed to go in, well, I say guaranteed, we plan to be back to normal. And uh, today I see our cases are down again here in Nova Scotia. So we're excited to continue to dream and look forward to 2022. So we're gonna cover off those three cruises today. And a little bit later, we're gonna launch our offering for 2023, which I'm very excited about. So uh, with that said, uh, Alma Waterways is a family owned business. They've been around for 18 years in the 19th season now. Um, and for us, they have the perfect uh, uh, co connection with their guests. So we as a company love that family oriented spirit, that hands on um, uh, way of approaching people. And that's very much what you get with Alma Waterways. You're seeing uh, three of the owners uh, there, one in, in the uh, rickshaw, uh, and the other two, uh, Christine and Rudy. And those uh, three uh, individuals have a long history, either in the tour business or in the cruise business. Rudy um, has uh, started many of the other cruise lines and uh, they took all of their knowledge uh, and 18 years ago, I guess 2002 was the, the first year they decided to uh, take their knowledge and start AMA Waterways. And uh, what an experience. I always say it's as close as you can get to all inclusive um, when you're there, uh, there's, there's really uh, all your activities are included with the odd exception, um, your uh, wine and beer are included with your meals and um, the staff just treat you like you're at home uh, right from the time you arrive. They know your names very quickly and they just can't do enough for you. Uh, the accommodations on the uh, river cruise are, are stunning. Um, uh, Ama came up with the the uh, French balconies and then eventually the double balconies, uh, the twin balconies we call them, with an outside and an inside. There's varying categories uh, on the uh, ship. You can see what a room looks like inside, very uh, spacious. What you're seeing there is a French balcony behind those uh, drapes. And uh, like I said, the upper deck of the ship is absolutely um, lovely, uh, all open deck with uh, seating and walking trails. There's there's uh, no shortage of uh, viewing points uh, on the ships and uh, all specially designed for the rivers of uh, Europe and, and um, other spots that they go, they specifically uh, outfit the ships to uh, work with that. And that's what Rudy is an architect, uh, uh, very uh, 
hands-on with the building of all of their ships. And as you can see, here's a twin balcony room with your French balcony and your outside balcony with your chairs. You um, have uh, computer access. There's no need to bring um, your own with you unless you want to. The TV screen also works as your connection to the world through uh, Wi-Fi included. And uh, it's just an absolute uh, treat. And if you're traveling, um, with someone else that you're not sharing the bed with, those beds get separated into two separate beds. But there's your complimentary high, feet, uh, high speed wireless internet throughout. Now there's always, uh, you know, when you're traveling from country to country, there always can be some areas that, that are a little sparse, but you won't be without it for long, that's for sure. Um, then on to the, uh, the next uh, slide, the culinary is exceptional. Their, their main dining room is uh, available for uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Even when you're out doing shore excursions, uh, there's always an option to come back and have lunch on the ship. Uh, in the evening, there's, a, there's also um, uh, you know, menu changes every day, but they have standard fare as well. So the menus are all inspired by the countries we're traveling through. You'll see the fresh uh, produce and, and uh, supplies being loaded daily. And even your wine pairing matches, once again, where you're traveling, matching your culinary and uh, just a, absolutely um, one of my favorite parts of the trip. <laughs> I guess, uh, Sandra, after being in the business this many years, um, it's, yeah. uh, it, it plays a big role uh, in, in why we uh, find it hard to keep the weight off uh, all of these uh, great specialties. <laughs> and then on, on the ships, they also have on most ships uh, an, another choice. They have the chef's uh, table specialty restaurant, which everyone gets to go to at least once when they're cruising. It's the same menu in the chef's specialty restaurant. They uh, prepare it in front of you, serve it. And when we go as a group, of course, we all get to go together and uh, it's a real fun, special night for us. And it's paired with all the different kinds of wine. You're seeing uh, the, the lovely layout here uh, of the, you see the chefs working in the background. This is the uh, chef's table specialty restaurant. Here's a, here's a group of us that were on, this is the main dining uh, level on the ship. And they have some wine rooms at the back, which uh, you can uh, use if you want to have a get together with a few more people uh, and be a little bit separated from the rest of the group. But uh, we were all having a great laugh there, uh, enjoying some wine and some great culinary. And um, if, you're, if you're not familiar with um, uh, river cruising, there's no more than 70 cabins on a ship. Uh, so you, around 140 people. And if you have singles, then those numbers would come down. This is what I always refer to as the big giant living room, the panoramic lounge. Uh, it um, covers one whole section of the ship, uh, beautiful floor to ceiling windows, very comfortable seating, a beautiful bar. If you decide to sleep a little late, this is where you'd get your uh, complimentary continental uh, breakfast that you can help yourself to or snacks throughout the day. There's always something being served. And one of my favorites is even when you arrive at the ship, if your accommodations aren't immediately ready because you've arrived early, they always have a great selection of arrival um, desserts <laughs> uh, for you to try and samplers. But uh, like I said, here you get to know pretty much everyone that's traveling on the ship in some way. There's always briefings or presentations going on. Very, very comfortable. Um, and so the, the, um, the back half of the ship is your accommodations and the front half is your public spaces. Every night uh, prior to dinner, uh, about an hour prior to dinner, you have a sip and sail cocktail. Uh, or two. Um, it's it's uh, uh, no shortage of uh, cocktails prior to going to dinner. And this is where you're going to learn about the next day's activities, perhaps, or, or um, what's going on that's special. And um, you're going to get to mix with other people and uh, then head off to dinner. And you have to remember, you know, you can be as busy as you want to be in the mornings. You'll have an option for a morning tour or you'll be sailing on one of the beautiful rivers the same in the afternoon. And like I said, coming back uh, for lunch. But if you're out touring and want to stay in the towns that you're in, you're welcome to do that. There's always shuttles back to the boat until we actually sail. And uh, so and that's always posted. They know exactly where you are. Uh, your key is scanned, getting on and off the uh, ship. And, uh, and the times of departures are always posted. So like I said, your vacation can be as busy or as relaxing as you'd like to be. And uh, with that said, uh, 
the, uh, there's a library on board, there's lots of public spaces, there's a, a beautiful coffee bar, um, there's even the uh, chance to fill up your water bottles. I think that's transitioned to most of the ships now, but uh, the ships have uh, worked at, um, you know, refill stations and, and those kind of things. And all of the protocols that had to be changed for COVID will, uh, you know, be a work in progress as, as we come back to normality in life and on every type of vacation that we take. The crew is incredible. Like I said, the room attendants, to the uh, captains, to the hotel manager, to your your um, your shore excursion, or uh, what do we call them on the ship, Sandra? The um, the guides. The guide. The, well, you have the guides, but the um, the in charge from day one. I always call the cruise it managers and the hotel the cruise manager. manager. Yes, <laughs> uh, they they are they just can't do enough for you and. That's the 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 values of the entire team. From the time they arrive, they are there with a smile on to look after you. And uh, and like I said, there's uh, activities where you'll get to meet them. Everyone gets introduced. Uh, wellness programs have been added on Ama Waterways. They're leaders to do everything first. So they were the first to come up with uh, these kind of choices. There'll be a gym on board, activity staff, yoga. There's a walking trail on the top deck. And who can go on a cruise without having at least one spa treatment? I look forward to that every time. And, and uh, excellent. There's uh, uh, ability to have your hair done, all of those things right there. Uh, they all have um, pools or hot tubs. Uh, and, uh, and like you're seeing there, the, the beautiful decks with a full uh, panoramic view. There's one of the pools uh, and bar service. Uh, and beautiful uh, uh, castles along the riverbanks. Uh, it is truly a stunning experience. Uh, the tours themselves, there's varying paces of tours. There's uh, various lengths of tours, depending on where we're at and choices. And um, you know, you're know, you asked to sign up for them, but if you decide in the morning you don't wanna go, you just don't go. They're all included uh, in the price that you're paying for your trip. Um, and like I said, it's hard to find an optional, but every now and then there is an optional event, but you're, if you didn't do that, um, certainly you'd still have a full trip without it. Um, uh, like I said, gentle walking and regular walking tours, fast pace, and AMA uh, proudly has um, bikes on board. So if you want to get off and bike from one spot to the other or go out, there's always an offer that's a biking tour as opposed to a walking tour. So if you like a little more activity, that's the one to go for. And uh, with uh, that said, I think the next slide is um, on to uh, our tours. And I'm gonna now turn it over to Sandra. Our first one that we're doing is a Taste of Bordeaux in April of uh, 2022. We're leaving April 20th to fly over to beautiful Bordeaux, France. Can't wait. Excellent. I know, and a lot of good wine drinking over there, Richard, in Bordeaux, so. Well, you and I both love to drink wine and the people that have already signed up for this trip love wine as well. But uh, if you're not even a wine lover, this is still an exceptional trip. Absolutely. And I have to say in uh, the many years, I'm uh, 14 years now in my going in my 14th year with Alma Waterways, I've had the luxury of actually experiencing every itinerary that we have to date. So it's just such a wonderful uh, opportunity for me be, to be able to come with you today here and share all my knowledge uh, that I have about all these great itineraries and wonderful choices that you've made because they all have their own special nuances and of well, course, this particular one is one that i haven't personally done so mm -hmm. so uh, i'm really looking forward to that as well and that's one of the great things in knowing you all these years is you know by the time i'm done i will have done all the rivers too Sandra. yes you will <laughs> yes you will exactly well bordeaux is really known for all the storied villages as you can see in this picture here there are chateaus and vineyards and just so much to see but it all begins in the just spectacular city of Bordeaux itself. And when you look at it, it really does uh, encompass the whole French feeling that you get when you're traveling in this area of France. And the city of Bordeaux, very clean city, very nice city. There's statues absolutely everywhere. So if you arrive to the ship and you feel like you just want to wander off and explore, the, the ships are all docked right in the heart of the cities. 
which allows you the opportunity to, of course, to get off and go and explore some. And right in this main area here, you can walk all along this waterfront from where the ship is docked. So it is quite spectacular. And one of my favorite stops along the way is the Place de la Bourse. So they call this the shimmering pools. And in the summertime, when you're coming by here, there's all kinds of little holes for better lack of a better term, but they shoot up, it looks like steam, but it's cool water. And as you're walking by, you'll see all the children playing and the water come shooting up. And with that backdrop behind, it, it's almost mystical. And it's something that everybody really enjoys having the opportunity to see. Bordeaux, also one of the stops that we make and we take you to is La Cité du Vin. And uh, it's like a wine museum. And when you go through, it's spectacular to see all the different varietals that they have there. And going to the wine store here is quite the wonderful experience because you can see there's so many different bottles of wine to choose from. How do you just choose one? You want to take them all home, trust me. So a kid in the candy store for sure. Exactly. <laughs> and the, and I should have mentioned too, on this particular cruise, there's a sommelier joining me, my, my new friend, uh, Darlene Myers. Uh, we've known each other for a few years. And she's a sommelier uh, located here in Nova Scotia and originally from Corner Brook, Newfoundland. So uh, she's coming along to co-host this trip and uh, she's going to demystify wine and, uh, and uh, she's unpretentious about wine and really uh, is a lot of fun. So that's one added bonus on this particular cruise. That's one of the highlights, fun. absolutely. So as we travel along, I'm just gonna pick some of the places that I experienced that I thought um, were rather spectacular along the route. And one of the places that I must say that I enjoyed was Borg. Now, when we get to Bly, you can actually bike from Bly to Borg and meet up there. And we'll take you right to where there's a hot spring. So if you feel like you wanna jump in the hot spring after that nice long bike ride, you can. But then you really need to come up the hill and join us. We do this little festival in Borg and we're the only ones in here. It's very engaging. You have uh, the girl you can see there in the checkered dress. She sings and she has a beautiful voice. We do a whole lot of wine tasting while we're here. There's music and, it, and again, it's interactive so you can dance and she'll get you all involved in. It's just, it's a lot of fun and one of the highlights definitely that you'll experience hearing real authentic French music and the singing and the songs and then of course the wonderful uh, wines that you get to taste. Another one of my favorite stops, because you are going through an area that has some castles and chateaux and whatnot, is the Chateau de Roquetaillade. And this particular one is amazing. Now we do go inside and we'll take you on a tour all through the interior of this particular chateau. And as well, you can wander about the gardens and see some of the outbuildings that are there. And uh, there was a, a little lady that took us on the tour through here and she has quite the personality. So um, I'm sure that as you go through, you're gonna hear the many stories behind the Chateau and who owns it now and the, the relevance of this particular place. Another favorite of mine, saint Emilion. Now saint Emilion was actually started from the underground. So it was built from the underground up and underground you will find a church, there's catacombs, there's so many things to see and we will go down into the underground and show you the church. Uh, very, very old, as I say, built from the underground up and what's up top is just something else to see. It's completely surrounded by vineyards and the famous Bic Pam family, like the pens, the lighters, et cetera, they have an estate very close by. So we like to take our guests there and do a lovely little wine tasting when you're in saint Emilion. Now, if you're traveling on this particular itinerary, of course, you're going to have your cruise and um, you have set it up with the Bordeaux in and out of Bordeaux. But for those who would like to extend it, we do offer a package where you can go in and um, pre or post, you can spend a couple of nights in the Loire Valley, a couple of nights in Bilbao and St. Sebastian. You can see Bilbao here a beautiful community. It's very small and it's right on the coast. And then Loire, all about the chateaus again. So uh, Sandra, you mentioned a good point on all the cruises. 
uh, what we do is we like to leave as a group. We have a lot of solo travelers like to travel with us. So generally we all fly from Halifax over together, do uh, either a pre or post or just a cruise. And so each one we designate that way. But if we're doing a pre and post, you don't have to do the pre and post or uh, vice versa. So, you know, it's the only difference would be you'd be flying independently on one leg or both legs of the trip rather than joining us as a group because uh, Atlantic Tours is famous for worry free travel. And so we like to look after you from uh, start to finish. And so uh, that's why I like to host these trips. Of course, um, it's a great way to, um, as I get older, there's a lot of the world I want to see. And I'm, I always say I'm going on these with or without you. So uh, <laughs> that's uh, what I do each year in choosing my vacation to Europe. And we'd love to have those join us, especially solos, because they uh, often um, are a little more uncomfortable traveling on their own. And so we can mix them in with the rest of the group. And uh, so we, we try to generally we, we look at having somewhere between 20 and 30 people on, on these cruises. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, our next destination that we're just going to speak a little bit about is the Enchanting Rhine. And this one, I know you've done this one. <laughs> yes, I love this one. And the, the great thing this time is I did it from Amsterdam to uh, Basel. And this time we're doing it from Basel to Amsterdam. But we've added the pre-Zurich and Lucerne, which is something new for me. So I'm very excited to, to do this one. August uh, 25th, a great time to be going. Um, back on September the 1st. So actually, we're actually leaving before that. We're leaving on August the 20th to do the pre. So this will be just the cruise date. Uh, if we're doing the pre Zurich and Lucerne with me and the rest of the group, um, we would be leaving on August 20th. And as of right now, we have about 26 people on this. So um, the, we'd like a few more to join us. That's wonderful. And what a great opportunity. So as Richard, uh, you mentioned here, leaving from Basel to Amsterdam on the cruise. But prior to that, we have the optional land, or this one's not actually optional though. You've included the land. We've, we've included it, but if someone doesn't want it, we can take it away and they can just do the cruise. They would fly in to go to Basel and join us there. Exactly. And two of the most beautiful cities, I have to tell you, Lucerne in particular, I absolutely adore. Lucerne with the mountains surrounding it and I've been up Rigi, I've been up Pilates, um, I've been here a few times and I can tell you the accommodation that we use is really close to that bridge that you can see there, the covered bridge. You can easily walk around in this area so it has so much to see, even the Lion Monument, which I'm sure you might remember from when you were there. So a lot of spectacular sights along the way. And then we will transfer up by coach and arrive in Basel, Switzerland to the ship, which is docked very, very close to the heart of Basel. So again, if you're there and you have some time before uh, settling into your stateroom on board, you can wander into the city center of Basel and go and explore a little bit and see what the sites are around there. There's some beautiful hotels. There's You can walk pretty much along the waterway um, or just up a street and, and take in some of the lovely architecture that's there. And then we're going to start cruising. And for you and I, Richard, I picked the highlights again. <laughs> I, we love this. One of my favorites. Yes. And, and uh, a wonderful fairy tale, a Disney fairy tale was built around Requeer. So it has quite a history. And uh, you're going to hear all about it. And I know you took some incredible pictures when you were there. So well, we were there in November. So they were getting things set up for Christmas. So everything was all decorated for the holidays uh, just prior to the Christmas markets uh, starting. And on the way, the drive on the way out to this, I mean, you're passing the original Statue of Liberty and some other great um, countryside. So it's uh, to me, we just had some free time here to, to wander around. We all loved uh, digging into the shops. It was marvelous. Exactly. And if you don't choose the requeer option, then you can always go and do the included excursion, of course, all the mar, uh, through Alsace, which is the, the Black Forest in that area. And it's all about cuckoo clocks and that sort of thing. So still very, very exciting. You'll see lots of cuckoo clocks uh, when you're uh, out uh, wandering. And, and that's perhaps what I'll do this time is do the opposite, but it's hard not to go back to there being one of my favorites. I'm, I'm with you on that one. 
And another one of my favorites along this particular body of water, the Rhine, or yes, the Rhine River would be Strasbourg in France. It is so beautiful, surrounded with all the canals and in the nice weather, you'll see boats taking people on boat rides. We do a nice walking tour through the city here, starting in Petit France, where you see the half timbered houses like you're looking at here, making our way right into the city center with the big cathedral and the astronomical clock inside. And one of my favorite things about Strasbourg the gingerbread cookies. Yes. And, and I loved, I went, actually went in for the presentation of the clock and that was phenomenal as well. I really, really thought that was spectacular. Yeah, I believe there's over 95 different workings on that clock, if I'm not mistaken. So it really does have quite a lot of mechanisms, a lot of things happening when it goes off. So And, and as always with Alma, if you wanted to win, your admission was included. I mean, it was all, all well looked after by your guides and the guides do an amazing job. It's amazing how many steps we've done by the end of the day, but you'd never know it because they're giving you so much history and insight along the way. And, uh, you know, all have done amazing things in their life and uh, and uh, then share all of their their own experiences along with all the the, the wonderful history mm -hmm. exactly. so loved it here too yes another one of my favorite stops heidelberg germany and uh, of course when we're here we're not docked right in heidelberg we dock just outside of but we transfer into the city it's very um busy city so getting in, it's easier to do it with a coach. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna take all of our guests right to the Heidelberg Castle. And we will go um, not throughout the castle, but we go into parts of the castle. We'll show uh, the guests one of the largest wine vats in Germany, which is inside the walls. Of Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. And there's all kinds of points where you can go out on the front side. We're looking at the back corner of the, the castle in this picture. But in the front, you can go out on a big terrace and look and see the river. You can see the city center down below. If you look across, you can see the philosopher's path where our guests might choose to go hiking and then the bridge down at the bottom there. And when we walk into the city center, if you choose to walk, that would be the active pace tour, the one I would recommend. You're gonna leave the castle and literally walk through and down through a neighborhood and down into the city center. It's not a difficult walk, but I really quite liked it because you got to walk past a lot of the homes and see how the people live in this particular community. And I just found that really, really experiential just to go through and, and have that opportunity. So um, again, I love Heidelberg and uh, I think everybody will love it too. For sure, stunning. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to take you, if you are a castle enthusiast, we are going to take you all along the Rhine River to seeing all those beautiful castles. Um, that's why it's called the ABC route. It's all the beautiful castles. And there's probably about 28 or 29 of them along the way. And you'll hear the history of each and every one, what they were, what they are now, et cetera, the stories behind it. And all of this can be done when you're sitting up on the sun deck maybe you've picked up a bottle of wine somewhere in one of the stores you've brought it on board you take it up to the sun deck we'll uncork it free of charge and as you're cruising along you can enjoy a nice glass of wine or maybe a pint of beer or whatever the case may be and hear the stories a bit all yeah, you're welcome to bring as much wine on board as you want now I, i've never i've always had to leave some behind because i don't really need it and that's odd for me to say because you're you know between lunches and dinners and uh, sip and sales uh, but, you know, at those beautiful prices that you get those lovely bottles, but this would be the perfect day to sit up on the deck and, uh, and they're on both sides of the river, an endless array of castles and you just, uh, it just, you, you um, go, go into a place, you know, just to sit back and, and wonder what things would have been like in those days for sure. Absolutely. And it's hard to see in this particular picture, but just ahead of the wheelhouse, which is that little square in the, in the front above the long windows, um, there are beautiful rattan couches, like a great big, huge sectional. And you can go up there. There's blankets up there if it's a little bit cooler and you can put a blanket over you and you can just take in the sights as you're cruising. But I suspect we, we August, will be good in August, I suspect. You'll be good in August. So you know what? You might want to be in the swimming pool and uh, enjoying the sights from that perspective. 
Another stop along the way, and this is something exclusive to Alma Waterways and truly one of my most favorite stops is the Lonnet Ca Castle in Launstein. We do some of our ship christenings here. This is how beautiful it is. So we take our guests up and then it's a short little walk uh, along a lane into the castle itself. Once we get to the castle, uh, if we're there in the daytime, you'll have the opportunity to go around the outside and explore the gardens and see it before we take you in and we do a full tour. But in the direction that you're going, I'm 99.9% .9 certain that you will be arriving there in the evening. So what we're going to do is we're going to take you up to the castle in the evening. The castle is fully lit by candles. And we're going to go through the courtyard and inside and the interior is all lit by candles as well. It is so, so beautiful. It's, it's so romantic and it's peaceful and um, you'll see it all done up this way and hear all the stories about this particular castle. So Sounds wonderful. It, it is amazing, truly amazing. And another I, didn't get, I, I didn't get to do this last time, so <laughs> I'm looking forward to that part. Cologne now, I loved. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love it too. And in the background here, you can see the Cologne Cathedral. And the Cologne Cathedral is really um, popular, really renowned for uh, housing the remains of the three wise men. So over the Christmas market season, that is something that is very, very sacred to them and uh, something that you can see. For me, when I go to Cologne, I like to do the Taste of Cologne tour that we offer. And this particular one would have you going into a public house there which is like, um, imagine like a great big open room with tables and everything. And there's an oompa band playing. And we're going to serve you um, some of the most incredible beers of the Cologne area. And beer is really well known for, or Cologne's really well known for beer, the Colch beer in particular. So we'll give you a flight of beers with all the different, you know, blonde, red, etc. And not only that, but you get to try some of the potato pancakes and the pork knuckle and all the good mm -hmm. food that comes along with it. So I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, we, we, uh, most, most of us went out for a little beer after our walking tour and that was only a short walk back to the ship. So it was, uh, it was great. Exactly. It's a beautiful city. Lots to see there. And then we're going to end in another one of my favorite stops, and that's Amsterdam. You know, you just, you can never go wrong with this incredible city where you do canal boat rides and we'll take you to the market and uh, so much to see and so much to do here for sure. Well, who doesn't love Amsterdam? Please? Exactly. And we, and we have a special treat now that we've been postponed to 22 is the Floriads going on. Exactly. And Floriad is the world's largest horticultural show. It happens every 10 years, usually somewhere in the Netherlands. And as it happens in 2022, it's in Almere, which is just outside of Amsterdam City. So when you're traveling, as you are on this particular group, uh, we'll be able to take you and go to Floriad. So that will be an exciting time for sure. <laughs> Well, I guess that concludes our Rhine and now off to our gems, which I'm looking so forward to because this is a new one for me. Exactly. You have covered all the corners here in Europe, my friend. So you've done well. And October is a wonderful, wonderful time to do the gems of Southeast Europe. The weather is still nice. You're far enough south. You'll have some of the changing of the leaf colors. The wines are harvesting. Um, it really is spectacular. And with you, I know that you've already included the program in Bucharest and Brasov. And uh, these two communities absolutely love these two destinations. So good on you for including those. And well, who doesn't want to go to Dracula's castle? <laughs> well, exactly, exactly. And that's what everybody wants. And I can't blame them. So uh, we'll start, of course, down. You see Rusa here on the map in Jirju. And we will travel up to Budapest, and then we're going to have a postcard stay into Vienna. So uh, some of the highlights, of course, this beautiful palace. This is the second largest building in the world, and I've only got a small piece of it here. This goes on and on and on. And uh, something that you'll definitely see when you're extending for those two nights. And then we have the uh, Brand Castle in Brasov. 
And this was known as Dracula's birthplace and Dracula lovers are gonna absolutely love this Transylvanian tree. Um, Vlad actually was the ruler over Transylvania, but um, the story of Dracula was all based around Vlad and uh, his history. So it, whoops, so it's something else. Another stop and another thing that you're going to really notice on this itinerary are the varying fortresses that we see when we're traveling here. And they all have a story. So legend has it with Baba Vita Fortress that there once lived a Bulgarian voyeur and he had three beautiful daughters. There was Vida, Kula and Gamsa. So he owned a large amount of land that was from the Carpathians to the Balkans. And when he died, his land was divided among his three daughters. Now, the younger two daughters married very, very quickly to these horrible men who wasted the father's land. But the oldest sister, Vida, she remained single all her life. So there's something to be said for the solo traveler. She was a good, <laughs> she was a good leader and she had a castle built which protected her and her people from any assaults that might happen. She died of a very old age and she was so grateful and her people were so grateful to her that they named the castle after her. So it was called the Towers of Baba Vida or just Baba Vida. And I think, isn't there a song somewhere about Baba Vida? <laughs> I believe there is. <laughs> I, there is too. You're not gonna find me singing though. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that today. We lose guests. There's not enough wine to have me do that today. <laughs> and then this is Belgradishik, and it is also a fortress in Bulgaria. Now, it's truly one of Bulgaria's most natural wonders. You can hike around it. Um, it has these spectacular rock formations that come out of the ground. These rock formations used to form part of the sea floor and they are now um, gates. They have the gates there that they've, they've placed around there from Roman times. So there's a lot of history here. And uh, I've done this particular uh, hike to Belgradishik Fortress and lots of stairs. You take your time. We have lots of time when you're here, but it is worth taking the climb to the top and then having the view and imagining that when you're at the top, you know, you're looking out at what used to be the sea and is now gone the seas further away with the Balkans and the Carpathian Mountains. So uh, really, really interesting. What's great about this trip is, you know, getting a taste of the Eastern Bloc, you know, the... Truly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really, really good. Now, the Iron Gates are one of Europe's most awe-inspiring natural wonders. And I know that uh, for me, traveling in this area was uh, pretty, it, it was pretty incredible because there's this whole um, series of magnificent gorges as you're going along. There's only two locks on the Lower Danube when you're on this itinerary. So the day that we enter the Iron Gate, so when we're traveling from Jeju and we're coming up, we'll go through the lock. And as soon as we go through the lock and make a left, you're going to see this carved figure of Decibolus, King Decibolus. He's um, he is right there on the wall. He's quite magnificent. You can see how small the boats are down below him. Uh, but he is very, very proudly carved into the walls and uh, mountainside. And, and he's always so captivating as you're traveling. Now, uh, the thing with Deshabal, the, the king, when you get past there and you start entering the gorge, that will be the only day on this itinerary where you will not have internet. So just be prepared for that because as you're going through the gorge area, there's very, very few homes and whatnot. There's some inscriptions on the rocks from Roman times as you're traveling that you'll see. But being in this gorge area is so beautiful that you will want to be sitting up on the sun deck. You're gonna wanna take your camera and have or your phone, whatever, and take beautiful pictures from up there. Um, highly recommend that's the day of tranquility just to relax, unwind, and take it all in. Wonderful. Can't yeah. Wait. And Golubach Fortress, this is a new stop for On the Waterways, and we're very, very excited about this particular one. And Golubach Fortress in Serbia has also has quite a story about it. So 
there was once this girl and her name was Galia Banna and she was the most beautiful girl in the area. And the word of her beauty soon spread and this cruel Turkish Pasha, he fell madly, madly in love with her, but she refused him. And because she refused his love, he decided to get his vengeance back on her. So he tied the poor girl to a rock sticking out from the tower in the middle of the river opposite this mighty fortress. She died in pain watching the city that was later named after her. So there's a lot of folklore around these wow. areas. And uh, I, I think it's the stories are just so interesting. But when you see this particular fortress, you'll maybe recall the story and you'll be looking across. And I, I bet you she still haunts that, that fortress. I betcha. Mm -hmm. And then St. Sava in Serbia. Uh, this is the largest Serbian Orthodox church. So in, in the Balkans, it's the largest place of worship amazing amazing church when you go inside it's all open if you stand in the center and you look up that dome that's up there it's oh exquisite and i know everybody will be just awe inspired by the beauty of that and then we have scatalia which uh is a beautiful area right in serbia it's in town there's cobbled lanes there's alleys um, it's a residential area, but it's in downtown Belgrade. So when you're here, it's the Bohemian quarter of Belgrade, if you will. And it is referred to as the Montmartre of Belgrade. And you can truly see why all those little cafes and maybe you want to go there and have one of their special little pastries, which are authentic to that area. They have a lot of neat little uh, pastries and whatnot. And then, of course, we end in a great city. One of my favorite. I love Budapest. And, and that's you, the skyline at night is un, unimaginable. It's just so spectacular. It's the really parliament is. buildings. Mm -hmm. It comes to life. And uh, you're looking at the parliament right here. Ship docks right in the heart. And from there, we'll take you on tours. You can go up to the Fisherman's Bastion, which is a monument overlooking the Danube. If you're doing the walking tour, uh, the active pace tour, we will leave the ship and we will take you down in front of the parliament here and you'll see all the shoes lined up on the water's edge. And there's a whole story behind it about them taking the Jewish people down to the water and, and sadly killing them and pushing them in and all that was left was their shoes. So the shoes are a monument. And in fact, Budapest is filled with Jewish history. So if you're interested in that at all there are a um, lot of things that you can it see. was one of the reasons sandra why we did decide to do the post because if not we would have been arriving into budapest in time to fly home so that's why we're doing the two nights in vienna at the end and in, in order for people to get some time in budapest before we head on to vienna and who doesn't like to go to vienna again if you've already done the the other end of the danube the upper danube uh, then uh, certainly um, you know vienna will be a wonderful finale before we fly home i agree i couldn't agree more and uh, vienna is the only capital city in the world that produces significant quantities of wine within its city limits did you know that I think I learned that on my tour while I was there. And this <laughs> yeah. is one of the uh, when we were when I was in Vienna before it was one of the few times that you had an optional that you could pay for and that was to go to the palace. Exactly. And the same with the concert at night later in the evening to have yeah. a little sampling of all the uh, specialties of, of Vienna with uh, the um, you know Bach and Beethoven and all that kind yeah. of good stuff and v Viennese waltzes. But to know it's it's another great trip uh, October of next year to join us on. Exactly. And here um, you're, you can also try some of the great, we mentioned some of the wines, the, the white wine, the Gruner Veltliner is one of my favorite white wines. And it's an Austrian white and uh, very crisp, very fresh. We'll have that on the ship. Make sure you try a glass of that. Uh, if you don't try it on the ship, you can go into a Hürger, which is a wine tavern when you're in Vienna and you can certainly enjoy a nice glass of wine. Uh -huh. I really enjoyed the uh, the Austrian wines, which we don't really get here. So uh, there were some nice surprises throughout the boat and our stops. So, so that ends that trip. And then uh, for 2023, uh, I have chosen to do a Christmas markets. Yay. 
for November of 2023. And the actual departure date uh, will be November 22nd because I've added the pre-prog on. But once again, if the majority want to do just the cruise, we can go to Nuremberg. But I thought uh, I can go to Prague every year. It's just one of my favorite, favorite cities to go to. So how do you go there again and not uh, and not do um, Prague? So we're doing the three night uh, pre-Prague included in our program, but once again, it can be removed uh, and you'll see the cruise only price on our website as well. And uh, who doesn't want to do the iconic Christmas markets? Exactly. And three nights, my goodness, being in the old town square, because as you know, the accommodation is located right in the heart of this. So the astronomical clock and all the little um, little cabins set up where the locals are selling their wares at the Christmas time, and just an amazing thing. And everyone says, "What was your favorite?" I mean, I've stayed at the Hilton, which I absolutely loved, and I stayed at the Intercontinental, which I absolutely loved. Yeah. Location, you know, not that a short walk apart, but one is down towards the water, one is kind of in the center part of town, not far from the water either. And um, so both lovely, lovely spots. Absolutely. And then we're going to be embarking on the ship in Nuremberg and Nuremberg houses one of the oldest uh, Christmas markets that there are out there. And the holiday markets typically start the Sunday uh, around Advent. And they will go right through until the Sunday before Christmas. And then many of them will start up again right after Christmas. So uh, they, they will operate for four to five weeks, roughly. Germany is typically the one to, um, they have a slower opening than say Vienna or some of the other places. But Nuremberg is, I, I love this. And in front of the church that you see there, they typically have one of the tallest Christmas trees. And uh, when I was here a couple of years ago, I just loved it. And it's not just about the destination, because when you're on board our ships during the holiday markets, we love to have lots of festivities. And you can see how much we decorate. <laughs> well, it's, it's a perfect, uh, it's the Amalia, which um, uh, I think we're, we're on the Amalia on this Christmas uh, tour, actually. And it's a lovely ship. It's one of my favorites. And this is the entrance. When you come on the ship, this would be your front desk. And you see how warm and inviting the lobby area. And you'd have uh, six steps up to your accommodations or six steps down to your accommodations. Or you'd go through the library or the coffee rooms into that beautiful panoramic lounge. So that gives you a perspective of where you are here but I've not been to Nuremberg so this will be a new part for me because when I did the previous one we go to um, um, Vilsofen. Vilsofen is where we began after after Prague the both times I've done it in the past so I'm looking forward to something new and uh, and to do it for Christmas markets will be spectacular. Absolutely and nothing like being caroled by our wonderful crew on board uh, they, they really get festive. You can tell not only by the decorations, but you can see here by uh, the caroling. And we do uh, tree decorating competitions and lots of fun things. Even Santa Claus comes and visits our guests when they're on board one evening. So something. And, and the gifts are, are so unique, having been there um, drawing, you know, just prior. Often you're seeing them in the gift stores already, but uh, just so spectacularly done and, and not very reasonably priced. So. That's the great thing. Uh, it's, it is a beautiful experience. Exactly. And one of the things, one of my tips, one of my personal tips for you is, and, and I'm sure you'll concur with this one, Richard, but if you are exploring and you visit one of the markets and you see something that you really like and you think, well, maybe I'll wait and I'll just pick it up at the next market. Don't wait because every a market is authentic. Chances are you will never see that thing again. So right. If you love it, buy it because uh, you won't find it again. <laughs> well, and even even the little gift shop on board the ship has a lovely, and there's no real markup on them that are different than the other spots. So to me, um, you know, that's the only other spot you're going to find a few trinkets, but nothing like you're going to find in these markets because the little gift shop on the ship is lovely, but not very large. Exactly, exactly. And another one of the stops along the way that is pretty spectacular is Regensburg. And Regensburg has this humongous uh, cathedral. And one of the old popes that was in power 
Uh, his brother actually runs the boys choir here and they, they claim to be even better than the boys choir anywhere. So um, maybe you'll be lucky enough when you're there, they'll be practicing or something in the church and you'll be able to see that. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. And then Salzburg. My oh my God. Lovely. Yeah. One of my favorite. I've not been there for Christmas <laughs> markets, but I love it there. Exactly. So when we go to Linz, we have um, different excursions that you can choose from. You can come, of course, and do a full day experience in Salzburg, Austria dancing around the fountain that Julie Andrews danced around, um, the hearing all about Mozart and doing the markets right in the main square. And it is, you're just, you're encompassed by these mountains and it, it is just- Well, I had a whole different feel for the sound of music after, you know, after watching it, um, <laughs> coming back coming back after the trip and then you get to see the catacombs and you know where people were hiding and all that kind of stuff it's it's um you, you get a good flavor again to to relook at the movie so that was wonderful exactly exactly and this one has vienna as well and vienna i think has one of the best christmas markets out there there's different ones around vienna and because there's the ringstrasse that it in like encompasses the uh, main part of vienna where you'll go we'll do a walking tour through we'll get you all oriented and then we set you free in the market so you can go in and have some of the nice glue vine, the hot mulled wine. And, and some work. strudel, some strudel. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. And the chestnuts are roasting on open fires. And <laughs> it really is quite an experience to get you in the season. And then on to Budapest again, one of our favorite stops. And I don't know um, if you recall or not, Richard, but when I was in Budapest and I've done the Christmas markets, I've probably done it six, seven times now. But the trinkets that they had at the markets in Budapest were so, so different from what they had in Vienna. It was absolutely even I haven't been there for the holidays, but, uh, you know, even in the market, the stuff that you get to buy there, just uh, paprika, of course, everyone wants that while they're there. And uh, and but I mean, there's all kinds of uh, handmade stuff and it just goes on forever in the regular in the regular market. And and the the markets are right you know, a couple of streets up from where the ship is docked. So you're right there, which is lovely. And then you can go right down to the end of the street and into the big farmer's pavilion or the big uh, market, flea market that they have. And that's the place that you want to go to buy your paprika. <laughs> well, Here we so go. that's where our uh, cruise will end before we fly home. And uh, like I said, you'll be well welcomed on Alma Waterways and be well treated by myself. I, I can't wait to have you all with me again. It's been a long year for, for me not to have traveled anywhere in a whole year, uh, except for some stuff local. But Sandra, thank you for sharing um, uh, a little, we're, we took our time today and wandered through uh, these trips, but we had a lot to cover. Uh, normally we were going for about a 30 minute presentation, 30 or 40. Today we've, we've filled almost our whole hour, which is great uh, to cover off all this stuff. So uh, please reach out to reservations at AtlanticTours.com or me, myself at our Arnold at AtlanticTours.com. There's our 800 number on here. And like I said, these are all recorded. Uh, hopefully you'll uh, join me um, next week and next week's uh, presentation is going to be um, if you can just advance the slide there for me Sandra since yeah. you're in control today yeah you bet. the, uh, the uh, one we're going to do is the cherry blossom uh, festival in Washington DC and um, and uh, with that said uh, I am um, um, my special guest will be uh, someone that's a longtime friend of mine uh, from a Washington area that's gonna take us through that wonderful adventure. And uh, we suspect everything will be open and running for, um, for next uh, summer. And, um, and so we'll, uh, or I should say next spring, that's when the cherry blossoms bloom in Washington, DC, but what a fantastic city. So that's uh, coming up next week, the following week on uh, June the 9th, I'll have Norwegian Cruise Lines to talk about all the protocols they've put in place and uh, what Atlantic Tours might be doing with them, uh, or is, is doing with them, I should say, uh, when we reopen. And uh, one of them being the Bermuda Cruise. And then uh, following that, June 16th, our, our tea at three will be Old Cape Cod, one of my other favorite destinations to go, just, just down the road, we say, in New England. 
And then I'm really excited that in uh, on June 23rd to be covering our new Ireland and Scotland trip that will be launching in 2023. That'll be a, a cruise that I'll be hosting again in the um, the uh, spring of uh, April of uh, 2023. So with that said, uh, if uh, you know people that would like to listen, uh, the recording will be sent out to you. You can forward along to them or you can visit us on our website to look at all of our recordings in our past Wednesday webinars. And uh, hope, uh, hopefully the weather will continue nice now and uh, we look forward to a wonderful summer and we'll be excited to get uh, things moving again. That was great to hear the cases fall to 37 today. So uh, hopefully we'll be back and be able to travel local in the coming months, but it doesn't hurt to continue to dream and get your deposit down. Uh, with the AMA cruise, your deposit is, uh, any of our AMA cruises is $500 and, um, and basically no more payments due until we do air, which is usually about 11 months prior. And then final payment, uh, 120 days uh, prior to our departure. So uh, with that said, uh, thank you again, Sandra. Wonderful afternoon to be spent. And let's look to see if we have any questions. Uh, I almost uh, missed that. Someone just said, thank you for hosting. We're thrilled to be here. And let's see what's in the chat box. Um, can't wait until next year. So we, we have, uh, I know one of my travelers on there, Cindy, we can't wait to have you and Michelle uh, with us again. And, uh, and uh, thanks uh, again for all of you uh, joining us and uh, look forward to traveling with you all soon. And bye for now. Bye.